Acoustic Design Reference. Yes, from a company that's typically known back in the day as a budget brand, actually had a high-end or reference version of amplifiers and other accessories. If we jump back in the virtual time machine back to January 1993 Car Audio and Electronics, we'll see the Acoustic Amp 510DR listed as a new product, $475. Talks about all the goodies this amplifier includes. Acoustic heavily advertised these design reference series in the Car Audio magazines, talked about the high-end Class A balance input circuitry, also the hysterious distortion canceling circuit, and all kind of other marketing terms for this series of amps. And it even include the gold package. That's right, the DR logo was gold. It looked like the old Acuras and Hondas back in the day that had the gold package you could get for an extra 800 bucks. And yeah, we have the Amp 510DR 2x100 watts RMS. I really like the look of the heat sink. It's kind of that champagne finish. Very, I don't know, very nice looking overall. As far as dimensions go though, 16 and 5 eighths inches for the long side, 9 inches for the width, 2 and a quarter inches for the height, millimeter equivalents are there as well. Now if we look back at the 1993 Car Audio and Electronics directory, again we'll find the Amp 510DR listed for 475 which is equivalent to 1055 in 2025 inflation adjusted. Now let's take a closer look at the amp to see the features. Here first up we'll notice there's a switch for balanced input, either off or on. Obviously leave it off if you're just using standard RCAs. There are peak LEDs here which help in assisting your setting your gain. And speaking of your gain, there are individual adjustments here for each channel, 150 millivolts to 1.5 volts. Also we have gold plated RCA inputs. And if you want to use balance inputs, you use the additional two at the bottom which are the additional negative or grounds for the inputs. And again, if you're just using standard RCAs, use the top connectors, the ones that are colored red. As we take a look at the other end of the amplifier, we will see the power inputs, also the speaker outputs. In addition, we will see two 25 amp fuses. These are the standard ATC style you'll find at any auto store. Also the power and ground inputs, these are 10 gauge you can fit 8 gauge if you shave them down, but they're really weird terminals. I'll show those later. Also, 12 volt remote turn on is a little bit smaller. That accepts about 12 gauge. If we look further down, we'll see the power LED. Green means good. We like green LEDs. Also, the speaker outputs 10 gauge insert terminals, left and right outputs. And if you want to bridge the amp, use the left positive and right negative as shown here. As I mentioned before, Acoustic heavily advertised these because they're such a budget brand. They wanted people to understand how much better these amps were, including the 12 in-channel hex fed output transistors, Class A input stage, thermal, short and thump protection, and a lot more. As far as ratings, 4 ohms 100 by 2, 2 ohms 150 by 2, bridged 8 ohms 200 watts, 4 ohms 300 watts. So of course we want to put this amplifier on our amp dyno to find out what kind of true power output that it makes. If you haven't seen these tests before, on the left you'll see the power output in watts. In the middle the ohm load. On the right is the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote clamp estimating the amplifier's efficiency. This is a class AB old school amp, so don't expect that efficiency to be very good. Two channel test. We'll have the left and right channels hooked up to the dyno because it does measure two channels. So let's try first 4 ohm stereo rated 100 watts by 2 at 13.8. Let's try it out. Here we go. Certified 1 kilohertz. Can we get 100 by 2? Easily. We get about 125 watts by 2 average at 13.6. Here we drop the voltage down to 12 and a half to see what we get. And we're still able to get over 100 watts per channel at 12 and a half volts. We also bumped it up to 14.4 to see what kind of output we could get. Again, this is the 1% distortion. And there you go, 128 watts per channel average at 14.22. Next up, we'll run the dynamic test sending the one kilohertz pulse track into the amp. This amp is stated to have some dynamic power, but we're not seeing a whole lot here. About 133 watts per channel average at 13.67. Now two ohm stereos rate 150 watts by two at 13.8. So let's try it out. Again, certified test first, 1% distortion at one kilohertz. 
And yes, we get the 150 easily. We're uh, close to 200 watts by two at 13 and a half volts. Now we did drop it down to 12 and a half to see if we could still get that 150 by two. And we can, we get over 160 by two at 12.28. Of course, we got to bump the voltage up too. Try it with more than 14 volts. Let's see if we get over 200 watts here. And yes, we do 221 and 212 at 14.1. Reset the dyno here for the dynamic track. See what kind of dynamic power we get. And it's a little bit more, not a huge amount more, but about 235 watts per channel at 13.62 average. Now let's bridge the amp for mono and talk about how that's done. These may be some of the worst terminals I've ever seen for the speakers and also for the power and ground. Now it says it'll fit 10 gauge. It's really difficult, this is 12, to fit 10 gauge or eight. I used eight and shaved it off when I did the amp dyno test. But here I'm gonna remove these and show you when we bridge the amp. I have to take this other one out. But again, the way this thing works is so goofy because it just it's not intuitive that you unscrew a screw above and then remove it below. But if you wanna bridge it, you simply go from left positive to right negative, and that will bridge the amp for subwoofers or for a single speaker. All right, now you know how to bridge the amp. Let's try it at four ohms mono. It's rated 300 watts at 13.8. We're using the 40 hertz track here. Let's see if we get that 300 watts, and there you go, 391 at 13.5. Of course, we're gonna drop the voltage down to 12 and a half, see if we can still get that 300 watts, and can we? Yes, we can, 317, 12.32. Now let's bump the voltage up to 14.4 and try it again and see what we get. And check this out, 429 at 14.14. This thing's more powerful than the Punch 150. All right, let's reset it here and try the dynamic track at four ohms. And again, this is the 40 hertz track. We're not using one kilohertz. We use that for the two channel test. And here you can see 428 at 13 and a half volts. And here are all the results you can see, including eight ohm stereo, which I didn't show. Also the efficiencies, which are expected for class AB amps between the fifties to mid sixties. And then the bridge test, we have the eight ohms, which we didn't show. Also down to two ohms. If you watch all the way to the very end of the video, I will show two ohms bridged, see how it handles that, see if it goes up in smoke. Now let's take off the screws here on the bottom of the amp to find out what's inside. According to the stamping on the board, this is a revision D board, which is a later board, has the 8200 microfarad, 35 volt Cornell Dubler or Cornell Dublay, I can't even speak that, capacitors, but it says it should have Wema or Rotostan for the bypass, and we see Shuey. That's right, these maybe have been recapped and it may have been replaced. I don't know, they kind of look normal, but I thought Shuey was like a motorcycle helmet. You know those fancy ones like the X15 DeGiro, an $1,100 helmet? This is not a Mickey Mouse program. You might want to tell Kusik that because it looks like they've got co-hanger wires on the inside. It's actually solid core acoustic technology or SCAT. They call it a use throughout to preserve the sonic purity and integrity of the audio signal. They say the solid core reduces the skin and modulation effects caused by the interaction of multi-stranded wire. So the ones believing this are running down to Home Depot to pick up their Romex wire for their car audio and for their speakers. For the rest of us, we'll stick with the stranded wire. Speaking of that, let's get the amplifier wired up here so we can try it out with some speakers, see how it sounds, because we are super curious based on all this fanciness this amplifier has. Let's get it wired up with the ELAC bookshelf speakers, get some music queued up, and here we go. I 
thought it would be fun to tease you guys with Acoustic RTA 33 real-time analyzer here. If you guys want to see this in a future video and have me talk about it, let me know in the comments below. I know these sound samples are kind of useless for you guys to listen to because you can't hear what I'm hearing in person, but I can tell you this amp sounded great with the speakers. I listened to it for an extended amount of time. And I know those RTA lights just make it all better for you. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it till I'm domed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine. If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine. I'ma stay in power for a long time. Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter. Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter. Big picture, I'm a straight killer. I send the song to the highest bidder. Got you I know that was a lot of sound samples, but I literally listened to this amp for hours. I was having so much fun. Let's move on to the pros and cons of the Acoustic Amp DR510. Obviously rated power plus. It does have that gold package. Has balanced inputs if you'd like. Also has individual channel gains. Clip indicators for helping set your gains. High quality components throughout. Great sound quality. And yes, these were made in the USA back in the day, whereas most of the other acoustic stuff was made overseas. Things that could be better, obviously, the no Tiffany RCAs, we got the standard regular RCAs. The power and speaker terminals are some of the worst I've ever used. It doesn't have any crossovers and it has class AB efficiency, but that's kind of the benefit of having an amp like this is that you don't expect it to be very efficient and you don't want to have any coloration from crossovers and stuff. So missing those extra features, in this case, may not be a con. Talking about cons, this is not a con. New t-shirt design. Check out links in the video description. Pick up a new t-shirt. Support Big D. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure you smash me the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also check my channel memberships and my Patreon if you want to help me out in additional ways like that. Everything is mucho appreciated. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you stick around to the very end to see two ohm test to the end. Big D, I'm out of here. 40,000 at zero ohm. Zero. We'll try the acoustic bridge at two ohm certified 40 hertz. It's not rated for one ohm loads. Let's see if it goes into protect or if it works. All right, looks like it went into protect at 276. 14 volts. We'll try that certified bridge to own test at one kilohertz. Let's see if it'll do this without going to protect. Nope, also goes into protect at 14, uh, 389 at 14 volts. We put about 60 amps of current. I'm not sure if the amp will do two ohms dynamic bridge, but we're going to try it anyway. 40 hertz dynamic. Let's see what it does. Okay. Looks like it does 690, but it comes in and out of uh, protection. Still 690, 14.2. Acoustic DR510, let's try dynamic burst two ohms mono at one kilohertz. See if it'll do this test. <laughs> it does. It does a pulse, it goes into protect, it comes out of protect, so kind of does the test, not really. This amp is not a one ohm stereo, two ohm mono amp. 